Hey everybody, it's Clint Arthur, and welcome to another edition of Entrepreneur's Adventures. New York City, what a beautiful day. What an amazing day, and I'm feeling so great because I just bid in an auction. It's been a long time since I bid in an auction, but the interesting thing that I notice is that every time I bid in an auction, I win. I win the bids. I always get what I want. Today, <laughs> today, what I got was a painting of the New York Stock Exchange from the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor. What? <laughs> oh my God. That was, that was thrilling. Thank you. I survived. I survived. The Range Rover was right behind you. I see him with the, with the doggy. There goes the Range Rover that almost got me, but they can't get me. They can't stop me. It was thrilling, this auction. Now, the last auction I did, I bought an Andy Warhol camouflage lithograph. I love Andy Warhols, and I love the camouflage. That was several years ago. I haven't bought any artwork in several years. Today, I was like all primed. Oh, look at that. See this building by Goldman Sachs, like, you know, lead on this freaking building. Look at that. It's pretty freaking nice on University Place. Today's auction, like, I came in and I, I told the guy as soon as I got my guy on the phone, like, I wanted to be bidding on the phone. I didn't want to be bidding on the internet. I wanted to be bidding on the phone so that I could have, like, direct access. Like, they have computer bidding, internet bidding, and no way, you know? I wanted to have a guy right there in the room. See, everything takes place on the phone. You gotta do it on the phone. That's how business is done. You wanna get something done, you gotta do it on the phone. I do. I do everything on the phone. Last night, I closed a guy into NASDAQ Many thousand dollar deal, many thousands. Last night, at, like, we started the call at 9.07 p.m. We started the call at 9.07 p.m. It ended shortly before 10. And I closed him into it. It was thrilling, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's finish up about the, uh, let's finish up about, about the art auction. What's going on with Nova? Be a good girl, Dougie. And All right. I, had to do time I have Ali walking ahead so I can focus here on my entrepreneur's adventure. Entrepreneur's adventure in New York City. Look at that. Look at that beautiful skyline. Freaking love this city. Okay. All right. <laughs> Everything gets done on the phone, folks. I wanted it. See, when you want it, you gotta get on the phone. If you want something, you gotta get on the phone. That's what I find. What do I know? I know. <laughs> I know what I know. I know what I know. Let me cross this street without getting killed here. The guy almost took out the baby carriage. See, baby carriage. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Look at that. That's one of my favorite buildings right there. See that one? This one. That one right there. I love that one. I'll give you another shot. Okay. You want to get stuff done, you got to get on the phone. That's what I find. That's why I bid on this auction 
on the phone. And if I hadn't been on the phone, I would not have got the painting, an oil painting. 40 inches by 59 inches, I believe. 40 by 59. Look at this crazy building. This building right there. Look at that crazy building. Ah, oh, right on Union Square. What a monster mega building that is. I, I wonder if I know anybody in that building. I don't think so. One of my fraternity brothers lives over there on 16th Street. How am I gonna get over here? Through the masses of people. Wow, that's cool. That thing right there. Okay, let's get back to this painting. 40 inches by 59 inches, I believe it is. Or, or 54 inches, one or the other. It's big. It's like, we're gonna put it on the wall above the couch. It's a painting of the New York Stock Exchange. It's full of people. It's red and gold. How did I find it? I'm, I'm so, what I, I'm, I love so much about this. I love so much about what, what happened with this painting. You're gonna see a lot of videos about this painting. And then you're gonna ultimately see it installed. I'm, go, I'm gonna go pick it up at the Zsa Zsa Gabor mansion on Thursday in Bel Air. Uh-huh. I'm gonna take you in a video of that, so keep your eyes peeled on that. Then I've gotta ship it back to New York, and then we're gonna install it on the wall above the couch in our apartment in Midtown Manhattan. And, you know, I, I tell you, the reason why I knew I had to get this painting is ultimately this oil painting of the New York Stock Exchange, which fits perfectly above a couch. Ultimately, one day you watch, <laughs> you watch, this painting is going to end up above the couch of some major stockbroker on Wall Street. You watch. This painting from the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor, oil painting of the New York Stock Exchange floor. <laughs> is going to for sure end up on a wall on Wall Street above the couch that belongs to some major stockbroker. He's gonna pay me a lot of money for this, I assure you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up on the NASDAQ Jumbotron at our next NASDAQ speaking event with a price. I'll put, I'm gonna put two prices because I don't know when I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna start out with a price of 50,000, then I'll put a price of 35,000 But for sure, one day it's gonna hang on a wall in a Wall Street executive's office. There's no doubt about that. How did I find this painting? How did I even, how do you even bid on a painting in the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor? How does that even happen? It happens because I read the news. I know a lot of people tell me I don't watch TV anymore, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I only watch TV on my phone, really. So I get it. But you have to stay up on the news. You have to stay current on current events, right? I stay current by reading Apple News on my phone. And last night at around 
one o'clock in the morning in Apple News, I read something on the ABC News website. Like there's an ABC News feature about the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor. And I click the link in there and it took me to the auction site. I start going through the lots. There it is. New York Stock Exchange oil on canvas, 40 inches. I think it's by 54, I'm not sure. 54, 59, whatever. I think it's 59, whatever. I'm like, whoa. I start doing research. There was a bid on this painting last night for 1400. By this morning, it was up to 2000 when they closed out the internet bidding, which really was just a way to start the bidding in the live auction, was with the internet bidding, which I thought was like, why would you bid on the internet bidding if it's just gonna be a starting point for the live auction? I registered for an account. I registered a credit card. My SPG, American Express card, which earns me SPG points. So purchasing, I hate that word so, there's that word so again. Purchasing this painting got me half a day at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Happy about that. This is another favorite building of mine I'm gonna show you in a minute. I've shown you this building, this next building, in other Entrepreneur's Adventure videos, but I'm gonna show it to you again because it's so badass. Just so badass. We're on Irving Place right now. In my opinion, one of the best residential streets in New York, just for quality of life. It's just so adorable, but I don't think I would buy here. I'm looking for a more prestigious address than a quality of life. But if I had kids, I'd probably buy something in that building right there. Look at that crazy building with a driveway and a garage and everything. Amazing building, 61 Irving Place. Look at that. That's gonna be really nice. That's gonna be really nice. The Gramercy on the corner when they're done renovating that, that'll probably be amazing. But anyway, and I'm watching the, I'm watching the lot. And this morning I call in, like it took me a couple, it took me like half an hour to find the phone number to call to register to be a phone bidder. But I did because I made the calls. I made it happen. If you want something, if you really want something, you got to get on the phone and make it happen. See? Another great building right there. Look at those apartments, yeah. balconies. What an adorable street in New York City, I gotta tell ya. <laughs> I register as a phone bidder. Then I'm watching the lots happening all day. And when it's about 50 lots to go, I say, come on, Allie, let's go out. We're gonna go have coffee. We're gonna take our walk, walk the dog, go have coffee, and then I'm gonna bid on and get this. And I'm like, all right, Allie, what are you willing to pay for the oil painting? And I go, she thinks a while, and while she's thinking, I go, are you willing to pay 5,000 for it? She goes, that's exactly the number I was gonna come up with. I'm like, okay.
remember it was 2000 the max the internet bids maxed out at 2000 it was going to open at 2000 a few minutes before i'm expecting the call to bid i go outside so i've got a clear signal and as i'm walking out of the cafe my phone rings it's the guys heritage auctions hey it's rick from heritage auctions hey rick Clint, actually, I answered my phone very, very strong. Clint Arthur. Hey, it's Rick from, from Heritage Auctions. Hey, Rick, I want to open the bidding at 2500 I'm hoping I can, like, stave off price escalation by opening strong. He goes, okay, cool. He, he knows I'm a real bidder now. He knows I'm a real buyer. <laughs> So, so, this is Gramercy Park. This is a private park. It's like a prestigious private park. There is an Alexander Calder statue in the middle of the park. We get to my lot. He, he doesn't open with my bid. Somebody else gets in a bid of 2,200. I say 2,500, he goes 2,500. Somebody bids 2,600, I say 3,000. Somebody bids 3,200, I say 3,500. Oh no, it goes, it goes to 3,000 and they're like, last call. I almost got this fucking thing for 3,000. Man, they go last call and it's like holding at 3,000, sir. And I'm like, yes, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna get it. Somebody goes 3,200. I go 3,500, they go 3,600, I go 4,000. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure who did what, but goes up to 6,000. I bid 6,000 and it holds again at 6,000. I almost got it at 6,000. And then some fucking asshole bids 6,500. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. Now here's the thing, guys. The only reason, like, what's 6,000? What's 6,500 to me? That's not gonna change my life. $6,500 is not gonna change anybody's life who's watching this video, anybody in my world. It's not gonna change your life, is it? I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna change anybody's life. Not if you're in my world. I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> For a little quiet. I don't like this light. Nice building, huh? This is the light I'm gonna take. Here's what I have found. What I have found is that I want what I want and I should have what I want. I just have what I want. I just get what I want. It's 2018. On December 31st, 19, uh, 1999, I was driving a taxi because I needed to and I couldn't get what I wanted. I could only get what I could afford. I was a taxi driver. And in the back seat of my cab that night were these two guys who were MBA interns at Goldman Sachs, talking about a high level guy at Goldman. Hey, did you hear, did you hear about Mr. Carrera? They made him the last partner before the IPO. He cashed out a gazillion dollars. I turned around. You guys talking about Chris Carrera? How do you know Mr. Carrera? Chris Carrera was a fraternity brother of mine. When I was the pledge master in the fraternity, I used to make those little punks dance around with their tidy whities on top of their heads. Now this little punk, younger than me, nice guy, smart guy, younger than me, just cashed out a gazillion 
in the Goldman IPO. I drive home to my little boat, climb into my bunk of my boat at like five o'clock in the morning when New Year's Eve is over. I count up my money. It's worth the pause, I assure you. $513. Where was Chris Carrera tonight, huh? Partying at the Rainbow Room. I can't keep doing this. I was supposed to be someone. Graduating from the Wharton Business School, I was supposed to be somebody special, right? Have you ever been so deep in a ditch you never thought you were gonna be able to claw your way out? I'm telling you, for me to go from there to here. Anything is possible. I swore an oath that night I was going to do everything I could to change who I was and how I was showing up. How I was showing up in the world. I knew I had full responsibility for what I had created out of my life and I needed to change me. So I did so. I did every kind of personal self-help work. I walked on fire with Tony Robbins. I did Toltec wisdom studies with Don Miguel Ruiz himself. Personally, I did men's power circles and ceremonies. I did everything a person could do to change. And sure enough, I got out of taxi driving and I got into selling gourmet food. I burned all the screenplays, all the books. I swore an oath to myself, I am never gonna write again. And all I did for the next eight years was focus on making money, selling gourmet food. Allie says one day, you know, I meet Allie in February 9th, 2001. I meet Allie. I see her crossing a parking lot. I follow her into a store, literally. That's how I met Allie. A year and a half later, I asked her to marry me. And she wasn't sure. She said, but we have issues. I'm down on one knee at sunset on New Year's Eve, 2000, it's December 31st, 2003, and 2002, I'm down on one knee. And she goes, but we have issues. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Honey. She says yes, but she didn't really mean yes, I don't think. I think she just said yes because I made her say yes. Throughout the 2000s, I get quite fat and happy selling gourmet food, my five-star butter company products. And then Allie says, hey, why don't we get into real estate? I learned about real estate. I did Carlton Sheets. I did Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I did nothing down. I got a fixer upper. I got a tear down. I built an addition on her house. Then I started buying vacant lots throughout the 2000s. I made a lot of money in real estate and gourmet food. And we started buying art. The first thing we bought was just a little Andy Warhol post uh, s and green stamps. I think I paid $3,150. Then we bought some more Andy Warhols. We bought a Kiku. We bought these two grapes, these beautiful grapes. Then we bought Andy Warhol Chanel for Allie's dressing room. That was beautiful. You know, the Chanel, the iconic Chanel. Then, I mean, we bought a lot of good stuff. We bought 
a Keith Haring. We bought Basquiat, nice Basquiat litho. We bought a Picasso litho. It was actually a lino cut. Picasso lino cut. Made a lot of money on that. Several years later when we auctioned it off. Allie had put it in this killer frame. It looked like a million dollars and it sold for a fortune. And we used a lot of that money to build real estate. We bought some of Andy Warhol sunsets. At one point we had three of them. And then we sold the three sunsets. We started selling all the art. And we sold the three sunsets and I bought some lady just got pulled over by her dog, knocked her over. We sold the three sunsets and I bought the Andy Warhol camouflage and got some money. It had been a long time since I bought anything. What else? Did I, oh, you know what else I bought? This was really cool. I bought these two Picasso tapestries, giant tapestries from the collection of the Sloan Kettering Hospital. It's a big cancer hospital in New York City. And shipped them out to California. My dad, the man who raised me, he had a doctor from Sloan Kettering who was treating him for pancreatic, no, 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 uh, he had prostate cancer. And I, I'm pretty sure he died in Sloan Kettering. And when I got those, it was like, it was like he got them for me, you know? I tell you, the point of this all is that today and for a decade now, I've been a man, I just buy what I want. If I want it, then I get that. That's called alpha male. Alpha males, they just know what they want and then they buy it. Most of my clients are alpha males and alpha females who just know what they want, they know it makes sense for them, and then they just buy it. It's a tremendously fun way to be. You just see what you want, and then you get it. I think it all started with Allie. I saw Allie, I wanted her, and I got her. Think about that for a second. That's the powerful thing that women do for men a lot of times is that they inspire men to be better men. I know Ali's inspired me to be better. I know Ali and I have really matured together, but I know I have really come a long way because of Ali. And I'm pretty sure that seeing her, wanting her, getting her, was part of my whole journey to becoming the alpha male that allows me to be the guy who goes into art auctions and buys what I want. Because when the bid hit 6,000, I bid 6,000, then the guy bids 6,500. And I'm like, mm, man, I wasn't gonna go above 5,000 for this painting. And then my auction assistant guy, Rick, who I'm gonna meet on Thursday at the Zsa, Zsa Gabor mansion in Bel Air, and I'm taking you there with me, so keep watching. He goes, it's 6,500, do you wanna go 7,000? I'm like, no. He goes, do you wanna do a cut bid of 6,750? I'm like, huh? He goes, do you wanna do a cut bid of 6,750? 
I don't even know what a cut bid is. What's a cut bid? <laughs> I just said, okay. He goes, 67.50. And then there was a long pause, long pause, long pause. And then it, go, it flashes, like I'm watching the auction on my phone. I'm watching the auction live on my phone, on their, on their app. And then it goes, last call. Now this is the third time it said last call. It went to last call at 3,000. I almost had it at 3,000. It went to last call at 6,000. I almost had it at 6,000. Then that fucking asshole bid 6,500 and it went to 6,500 and I put in the cut bid at 67.50 and it went to last call again and I'm like, and then it went through and I got it at 67.50 plus a 25% buyer's premium taking it to 84 and change. 84 and change from 5,000. I said to Ali, you willing to pay 5,000? She's like, that's exactly the number I was thinking. So how did I go from five to 8,400 and change? Because I wanted it. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's, how, that's how it happened, because I wanted it. I'm an alpha male and I just get what I want. It's expensive, but I did it anyway, because I can. That's what life is about. Being a guy who can do what you want anyway. Just do it. That's what life is about. Don't you want to be that guy? I'm telling you, I know one day down the road, I'll make a lot of money on this by selling it to some guy who's a, even a bigger guy than me. Some guy who has like $100 million on Wall Street because he's just going to want it. It's a painting of the New York Stock Exchange. It's red predominantly, it has some gold in it, and it's got all these little guys on the floor. And we're gonna put that painting on the wall over our couch in the living room, facing the Empire State Building. It'll be like when you look out, when you look at our living room, it's gonna be, you look out the window and you see the Empire State Building. You look on this wall, you see the New York Stock Exchange with all these people. And according to the feng shui work that Ali has done, the feng shui analysis that Ali has done on our apartment, that's the wall for helpful people. See? 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 Helpful people. See? I'm going to have all these Wall Street guys with all their money in the New York Stock Exchange as my helpful people. in the living room of my house for as long as we decide to keep this painting and or apartment. <laughs> ah, wow. No parking, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. except Sunday. Porsche Cayenne gets a ticket. He doesn't care. <laughs> He's just another alpha male. He wants to park there. So he parked there. What does he give a shit? 200 bucks to that guy? That's the story of the New York Stock Exchange painting from the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor. Stay tuned to much more to come. Stay tuned for much more to come on this continuing series because this painting has everything. This painting is everything. Anybody who knows me, you're like, oh yeah, of course Clint bought that painting. I almost bought the Zsa Zsa Gabor negligee, but didn't need that. Why was this painting so perfect? You see, folks, the stock exchanges are money, and attaching to money is status. 
you remember in the presidential election, Donald Trump said, folks, I don't need this. I'm so rich, I don't, I don't need this. He doesn't need it. Having a lot of money, being rich, is having a lot of money, and having a lot of money is high status in the USA. Anything you do that attaches you to money is increasing your status. This is why we do speaking events where we record marketing videos for our clients at the NASDAQ Stock Exchange in New York City, Times Square, which includes putting your book or other marketing piece up on the Jumbotron. In my case, in this event, I'm going to be putting up pictures of my new New York Stock Exchange painting with prices of 50,000, 35,000. Creating the marketing artwork so that when I'm ready to sell the painting at some point in the distant future, when I'm ready to sell it, I will already have the marketing created in advance. You don't wanna create the marketing then. You wanna be able to liquidate or attract customers and prospects and clients you want when you wanna do it. You wanna have your marketing in place so that you can take action. That's exactly what I'm gonna be able to do because I'll already have the NASDAQ Jumbotron imagery of the painting for sale, created and in my possession. <laughs> I tell you what though, even if someone offered me 35,000 for the painting tomorrow, I wouldn't sell it. I want the power of that painting working for me. This painting is gonna make me way more money than $35,000. Just on the video content, it's going to allow me to create. You want to go see what Jaja's mansion looks like, don't you? That's coming up. I'm going there. Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday? Today's Saturday or Sunday. I don't really know. <laughs> I think it's Saturday. And I'm going there Thursday to pick up the painting. Rick's going to be there. The guy who helped me to get that painting. Oh yeah, I said, what is a cut bid anyway? He goes, a cut bid is when you cut the bid increment in half. We were bidding in $500 increments and you're allowed one cut bid per auction. You used yours there. Those are powerful, those cut bids. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know, I don't care. I got it. That's all that matters to me. I got it. Now, some of you watching this may be thinking, what about that NASDAQ thing, Clint? Yeah, what about that NASDAQ thing? We're doing our second NASDAQ thing on April 30th. It's sold out. We have room in the event for 40 speakers. We have 40 speakers enrolled. It's sold out. We're doing another one on December 3rd. On December 3rd, you could be a speaker at NASDAQ market site in New York City. If you're smart, if you're an alpha and you're smart, you should be perking up because I'm telling you, these NASDAQ images, like all this stuff about the stock exchanges, you don't have to be a financial person to get value out of these stock exchange imagery. Look at this thing. <laughs> driving down the street in New York City. It's got a license plate on it and everything, Jesus. You don't need to be a financial person to get value out of the stock exchange imagery. I'm not a financial person, I'm a marketing person. Zsa, Zsa Gabor wasn't a financial person. She was a artist. She's the one who bought this painting originally. 
probably for like $250 from some guy in Paris. By the way, this, par this painting was painted in like 1963, before I was born, before I was even born, I love it. Cross right here. Cross right here. I gotta know right now. <laughs> Man, and this artist is dead. <laughs> the artist is dead. I think his artist's name is Poutine. P O U T I N E. I think. If you are an alpha and you say, hey, I want some of that New York City money attached to me, I want to speak at NASDAQ, I want a five minute video of me speaking at the NASDAQ podium in front of an audience of well-dressed executives. You want that? Yeah, you want that. I want the whole list of all their contact information. You want that? Yeah, you want that. I want testimonials from them about me being a great speaker. Especially if you're a financial advisor, you really want that because financial advisors can't get testimonials about their work as financial advisors, but you can have testimonials about your outside business activity as a speaker. That's called compliance busting. That's, my, that's a technique I call compliance busting. You can have that, you want that. Then we go out into Times Square and we put your book cover or other promotional item 75 feet tall on the Jumbotron. You want that? That image alone is super powerful. That's where I'm going to put the image of my New York Stock Exchange painting on the Jumbotron so that when I sell it, it's already massive, right? Talk about marketing. You want that, you definitely want that. I even shoot a video of you standing on the street in front of your Jumbotron ad and you can make a quick commercial. Like, hey everybody, my new book just came out. If you want a free copy of my new book, go to mynewbook.com. It'll change your life, whatever you want to say. You want that. There's training on how to maximize ROI from your whole NASDAQ experience. You want that because if you think any of this stuff I said or talked about today was smart, wait till you get into my private trainings on how to make more money. And then as a bonus, Allie and I got married on November 29th. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was November 29th. Allie and I got married. As a bonus, we are taking all of our NASDAQ clients out to dinner at the Harvard Club of New York City and we're asking them to be the entertainment at our anniversary party. This will be our 15 year wedding anniversary. I'm gonna take you to see one more thing. And at that party will be an amazing photographer who will take photographs of you, the alpha smart business person who's gonna invest in this NASDAQ opportunity. At the podium underneath the Harvard crest, which is etched in the wall in this room that we rent at the Harvard Club providing you with additional high status marketing assets for your personal brand, for your business, for your speaking career. Tell us, where do you speak? That's always the question they ask you when you apply to be a speaker anywhere. Where, where else have you spoken? I've spoken at the Harvard Club, I've spoken at NASDAQ. That's what, you get to say both of those things just by coming to this one day event on December 3rd. And there's a super great bonus opportunity coming up at the end of this video. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss this special offer I'm going to make you.
and you don't want to miss what I'm going to show you just now because I'm going to show you the building where I actually grew up. I'm going to show you my actual apartment where I grew up as a young lad and made up my mind that I was going to go to the Wharton Business School. I'm going to show you exactly where that whole thing ex happened in just a minute. All right, I'm getting close to showing you what I want to show you. Okay. This is where it all began, right here. And if you go up 18 floors, up to there, 18 floors, on the 18th floor, there's a balcony. That's my balcony where I grew up. Who else do you know who grew up on the 18th floor of an apartment building in Midtown Manhattan? Huh? There it is, up there. All of that, you get that whole entire package of goodies. And your NASDAQ video will be delivered to you that same day, unless there's an issue with your video that we need to fix, and I highly doubt it will because Ali was chair of the Producers Guild of America for four years, and the team we use is her PGA team. We use the best. Everything we do is the highest quality. <laughs> If you're watching this video, and you're one of the early people to watch this video early, the investment for the NASDAQ package, including NASDAQ, the Harvard Club of New York City, the NASDAQ Jumbotron, the list, the videos, the photos, everything, the investment is one, in one payment of $99.95 or six installments of $19.95. However, if you are the first person to contact me and say, hey Clint, I watched The Entrepreneur Adventure and I want the special New York Stock Exchange painting offer. The first person who calls me asking for the New York Stock Exchange painting special offer is going to get to register for NASDAQ for only the exact price that I paid for the painting. You can look it up. The auction lot is 65153, I believe, on Heritage Auctions, New York Stock Exchange painting from the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor. Look it up. The price was 8,400 and change. Whatever the actual price was, instead of one payment of 99.95, if you're the first person to ask for this offer, and today, is the 14th of April. If you're the first person to ask for this offer, you can get the New York Stock Exchange painting from the estate of Zsa Zsa Gabor discount. So hit me up with a text message and let's make it happen. If you're that alpha and you want it, if you're the kind of person who's driving Mercedes, who's riding around in limos, who doesn't care about parking tickets, <laughs> that's you <laughs> and you want to save a couple of ducats hit me my cell is 212-888-2999 212-888-2999 I'm looking forward to seeing you at the NASDAQ market site in New York City and 75 feet tall on the Jumbotron and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Entrepreneur's Adventure!